Welcome back to lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Today we're picking up the motor series with something pretty darn cool. I just want to demonstrate we have a more advanced motion control. We have a PI loop running regulating speed. We have another PI loop regulating position. And then I have a, a ramping function that uh, is my first stab at modulating step inputs, right? You're going to say, hey, I want to move the motor from zero rotations to one rotation. Go. And once you give that command to the system, it needs to do something with that, right? Motors and electromechanical systems have inertia. You can't just instantly change speed. We also can instantly change position. So we're going to have like an acceleration function to soften that blow um, so that you're not trying to get too much torque out of a motor. This really did take quite a while. Like off camera time, this took a really long time. And that's not for bragging rights or whatever. It's just sharing the process genuinely. Um, and what this script should do is every 15 seconds, it will give the motor controller a command to move one rotation. And you can see that because there's a little arrow at the top here that is going around. And this is doing it closed loop. And I have a couple plots to show you later. Pulled some data out of this. Not at the full control interval, but a little bit slower than that, just to make sure we didn't violate control timing. But yeah, I mean, overall, it works pretty well. The system does what it should do. It moves about one rotation when you tell it to. But one thing that this demo really exposes is there's a little bit of error accumulating, right? If I pull a line straight down, you can see we're no longer in alignment with this indicator like we were at the start. So it means there's either an issue somewhere in the encoder, or it could be like a number thing, because we're using a baked-in encoder library. Like if that were to overflow and we don't log that remainder that gets dropped, could be something as simple as that, because there's a huge gear reduction in here. So the motor down there is spinning a lot of times for one rotation on the output. Either way, it's pretty cool, because um, we give it a maximum speed, we give it a, you know, it, it is actually closed loop. If I introduce a disturbance, you can see that it does what you'd expect a closed loop system to do. And if I grab this, and we wait for the next control time, did it go? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> and we hold it. You can see it moves a little faster to try to make up the difference. It's all reasonable though, right? It's not going absolutely insane. It's just trying to regulate one rotation. Right now we have a little bit of overshoot, but all things considered, this is a lot better than where we used to be. So we're going to talk through what exactly is this ramping. I believe it's a trapezoidal ramp, but I haven't checked my math, so it might not be quite trapezoidal. I'm pretty sure it's a trapezoidal ramp. That's what I intended to do, at least. There are a few critical things that I want you to see in this graph. First of all, ramp out and ramp in. Ramp in shows the requested position. This is where you see that step function. These are plotted every quarter of a second. That's shown in orange. Then in blue is the output of the ramp generator. Make sure that you're looking at light blue. And it was very, very close with that yellow line. The yellow line is the real position of the motor. It's trailing that output of the ramp generator ever so slightly because, of course, with a PI regulator, there needs to be error for there to be a response. And that's the amount of error as it's like chasing that position. Then, of course, there's that darker blue, which is the speed set points. That's the output of the position PI regulator. In this case, we're plotting it in degrees, tenths of degrees per second. And then the uh, gray variable is showing the state of the state machine, 0, 1, 2, or 3. That's just telling me whether it's in the acceleration phase, the constant velocity phase, the deceleration phase, or the 
um, well, the, the target reached. There you go, target reached state. So yeah, basically this is just showing the system behaving normally. In the third movement, I grabbed that wheel and tried to turn it and made the closed loop control fight back, and that's what you see. Uh, the video is not totally in sync. I recorded this data off camera, but I just synchronized the motion for cinematic effect. I suppose we should probably talk a little bit about what ramping is. And I can't think of anyone better to use as an example for this than Trinamic. Trinamic is a phenomenal vendor for motion control, I believe. They have drivers for just about every type of motor you could ever want, <laughs> with or without an encoder, and it's phenomenal. Uh, they have a lot of motor controllers that have integral ramping. So they have a website, and I think I'll just drop a link down in the description, but they have a website that talks about their motion control technology. That includes trapezoidal ramping, what they call six-point ramping, which is just like trapezoidal, but slightly better. <laughs> and then S-shaped ramping, which limits acceleration, jerk, and speed. It's pretty awesome what they've done, and I've used their stuff before. It works really well. Not sponsored, I just have happened to use their products in the past. If you want to read more about it, I'm sure that Trinamic has a ton of app notes you can dig into, which is great. That's a part of why I mentioned them here. So if you want to learn more about motion profiles, more than the basics we've covered already, uh, feel free to dig in there. Okay, I've prepared a little side-by-side -side example of how the system performs with and without the ramping. So the limited acceleration, limited speed response. And yeah, I mean, we can clearly see less overshoot due to that ramp function, which is phenomenal. Right now, the no ramp seems a lot faster than the ramp, simply because it's unthrottled. It's just requesting full speed all the time. We could increase the target speed of our ramp, and it would be faster too. It's just a function of how fast do you really want it to go from here to there. What we hit with the no ramp is just the physical limits of the system. The current from the power supply, the capabilities of the motor, there's another physical limit preventing it from going full speed. So yeah, I mean, the motor is controlled better with the ramp. And now that we have this ramp, perhaps different PID parameters will work better. And of course, this could all be simulated in like Simulink or something. So yeah, I don't know, maybe we'll do that. But there's not really a point in tuning a motor like this perfectly. <laughs> it's not going to be helpful for a system because the second you apply something else, like a, a lead screw for a linear axis or a belt or something, that mass will change the characteristic response of the motor. Will it move? For, definitely, it'll move. Will it get to the right final value? Almost certainly. But it'll have some ringing, it'll have some overshoot, it'll do something that you don't want it to do from here to there. Which I suppose leads us right into the conclusion of this video. Uh, this is one of the shorter ones. And uh, thank you all for your great comments. I haven't been able to read them all lately. It's been a crazy busy season, but that's all right. I intend to sit down and, and read them all at some point in the not too distant future. Oh, just need to uh, catch up on a few things. But what can we expect as the next steps for this series? Well, I have a whole bunch more lame engineery type stuff to do, and I have some difficult decisions to make. Right now, we've just been using this Arduino Nano. It's a microcontroller. Is it the ideal motor control microcontroller? No, honestly, in many ways, we're pushing this thing past its capabilities. I would love to increase the amount of times that we're updating the control loops per second, but, well, I was a little lazy in the code. We're doing floating point math. We have signed numbers. It's not computationally efficient. And if I want to run it on something like this 8-bit micro, we're going to need to optimize it 
then of course I might be able to get something that's more like a DSP, port all the code over, but that'll take a whole lot of doing to go from here to there. So I have to think about microcontroller features, trade-offs, etc. And then we need to build a PCB that kind of integrates that all into one and links us up via Modbus. It will be crazy fun. I'm super excited to start testing this via Modbus. That is going to be so cool. <laughs> and I'll have to make a little power injector board. We'll have to find a way to get power and data into this thing. So we're going to move from this breadboard prototype to a real motor module that we could put on something. You know, maybe I'll even get some kind of a, a motor axis that we can hook up the motor to. I think it would just be a better example than this light gear thing. Um, yeah, let, well, we're going to play with it, right? We're going to take this one step even further to something that is even more useful than what we have today. And I can't wait. I want to give a special thank you to everyone who supported us directly via Patreon or being a YouTube channel member. That really helps us to do great projects like this one. So thank you. But most of all, I hope you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. There's a lot of good stuff, both in this video and coming up soon. So if you're interested in seeing the source code, uh, it's a little messy right now. It's really not ready for prime time. But uh, rest assured, we'll put some plots down in the description and let me know what you think. Uh, once again, I'll throw a call out. If you're interested in partnering with us to actually end up launching one of these modules as a product down the road, like, hey, I'm just going to keep moving. Let me know if you're into that sort of thing. We don't really bring products to market. That's not really what we do. Uh, we were just here to, to teach everyone a little something about motor control. But I would love to see this find its way into the real world. Well, that's enough mad rambling for now. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye.